All right, let's go ahead and start. All right, so we are here with week four of our FCA distance camp uh, kind of motivational speaks. Today we have with us Riley Coates. Uh, Riley, I got his bio here from my son. Uh, his hometown is Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, he went to the Air Force Academy. I know I've got actually a couple kids that really like to go to the Air Force. Maybe you can talk to them about what you should or shouldn't do about, about going to the Air Force. Uh, he's a two-time NCAA Division I National Cross Country Qualifier two times all Mountain West cross country, and he qualified for the Olympic trials um, this last year. So he works for the Air Force World Class Athletes Program participant, and he is just an amazing kid. I know my son really likes Riley. So uh, let's just give it up yay, for Riley Coates. All right, Riley, go ahead and go. Hi. Thanks, Mr. Fruit. Uh, really excited to be here with you all this morning. This is a, a really uh, cool thing that you guys are getting to do. Um, I never... Uh, participated in any camp like this. I mean, I went to running camps and stuff, but never something where you're actively seeking out God uh, in your summer programs and stuff. So you guys are already well ahead of me uh, from where I was at your age. So that's awesome. Um, so I've been running since sixth grade and uh, hope to continue doing so at a pretty high level here for uh, as long as I feel God is continuing to call me to do so. So um, for me, I think, like I was talking about at your age, uh, I was born and raised Catholic, but for me, uh, mass was just Sunday, like, like my God time was just Sunday and the rest of the week was just day to day stuff, academics, athletics, social life, but that was it. Um, and I didn't really could see how those would merge. Like they were kind of just completely separate things for me. Um, and I think we have to approach our Christian faith just like we do with running where, um, we wouldn't just do our long run on Sunday and then not run for the rest of the week and expect to be very good competitors. Um, so for us, we need to take time every day to seek out God, whether it's through uh, reading, through prayer, reflection, uh, talking to a spiritual advisor, just constantly feeding our systems uh, in order to, um, to have him at our center of everything that we do. Uh, so I just want to express to you all today that these can be merged um, and I'll, uh, Amanda alluded to this a couple weeks ago as well, just about um, just not having those as separate things, like having Jesus at the center of everything you do. So I want to give just a few practical tips for that um, as athletes. Um, and in particular, I'll go into talking about being a, a good teammate, uh, a leader on your team, and finally, how you represent yourself, your team, and your faith. So we'll first talk about being a good teammate because um, we can't become effective leaders without first being good teammates. Um, Jesus calls us uh, in a couple different verses um, to deny ourselves, but also to love our neighbors as ourselves. So in essence, Jesus is talking to us about becoming more selfless in all that we do. And the very best teams you ever see at any level are teams that are filled with athletes that are, that are selfless, that embrace their role. Uh, rather than worrying about what they want out of it, like their own personal glory, they sacrifice that for something greater, which is the team. So that's what he asks us to do. So an example of embracing your role would be, um, as I'm sure a lot of coaches go through every year, is you have your coach has to select seven athletes for their conference or state meet, and it's, not, it's usually not an easy decision, and there's usually a, a kid that's left out um, so if you, you're on the receiving end of that, which like I was once where I was, someone else was picked over me, uh, we have a couple different options in that scenario where one, you know, we could be bitter or resentful towards our coach or the, the teammate that took our spot, but that doesn't really, that doesn't help the team. So um, it's kind of a shift in your mindset. So the, the Christian athlete's response needs to be whether you truly believe the coach's decision is right or not uh, to trust in your coach. And then all of a sudden, and to have a, a shift in your focus to go from um, what you thought your role was going to be, which is maybe like, oh, yeah, I was going to be a scoring runner or maybe a pusher, someone in that top seven, like we think with cross country, to all of a sudden, my role is now to become the best supporter, the best cheerleader that I can be, which um, you have to let your pride down a little bit for that, but it's for the greater good. It's for your team. Um, and that's what, what we're called to do as teammates. Um, and that's how team cultures are formed. That's, I mean, that's something that if you, if you excel at that well, 
that doesn't just affect your team for that particular season. That sets a, a standard for down the line, and that's how great team cultures are formed and dynasties are formed with teams. Um, the very best teams have guys that are all role players. Um, so now we talked about what being a good teammate means. We can talk about being a leader. Um, Jesus is the ultimate leader. So we don't, I mean, we think of leaders today like sports figures or mm, politicians and the team captains, but we don't need to look any further for leadership guidance than Jesus himself, because unlike many leaders of today, Jesus is the ultimate servant leader. Um, this is a guy, the, the son of God, who comes to us as seemingly a simple man, but he's also all powerful. He comes and he's performing miracles left and right. And, you know, and he's able to die for all of us to save every single one of us. I mean, this guy snaps his fingers. He can do whatever he wants. Um, but this is the same guy that tells the disciples, I'm going to wash your feet. And to me, like, I'm, I'm trying to think of myself as a disciple on the receiving end of that thinking like, um, no, like if there's going to be any feet washing here, like I'm going to be washing your feet. I, I'm not even worthy to do that. And you're telling me you want to wash my feet. Um, and this is showing that he is just the ultimate servant leader. And that's what we're called to do as well. Uh, I would imagine many of you, especially the, the camp, if you're going to camps, you're pretty serious about this. You're about to be in leadership roles, whether you're a you know, rising junior or senior, or maybe a, you're going to be a team captain here. Um, and for me, like, and I'm sure this wasn't unique to my high school. Uh, sometimes the mindset can be, oh yeah, like th th this is like this privilege, like, oh, the team kind of serves me now. Like it's going to be the way, everything's going to be the way I want it to be or whatever I say goes. We're going to, we get to sit in the back of the bus because that's where all the, the cool kids hang out or I don't know if that's still a thing, but that's how it was when I was going through. Um, or we're going to do some silly initiation for the freshmen, but ultimately like we're in charge and the team is there for us. But what we fail to realize is that we're there for the team. Like we are now there to serve the team that leadership is not a privilege. It's a responsibility. Uh, so I want to go over a few practical tips on how to apply that. Um, first off, and, and I think most importantly, is we have to set the example. You have to be the guy or girl leading the team that is willing to put in the, all the, the big mileage, the extra miles, uh, put in the extra reps in the weight room, uh, cross-training their tail off when you're injured, um, and setting the example for when others go through the same scenarios, like whether they're injured or um, – but just setting the example of – uh, what you want your team to also follow. So it's, yeah, it's for your own personal physical development, but it's also for everyone else too, by setting the example. And like, don't, don't be the person that um, just talks about working hard. Be the one that actually does it, like walks the walk. Uh, and Cause actions speak much louder than words. Um, secondly, take care of your teammates, uh, particularly the young ones. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to set some time aside to have that one-on-one -on -one dialogue. And this can be as unplanned as, um, let's say you got a freshman or sophomore that either walks home every day or their folks are late picking them up. Just say, hey, I can give you a, I can give you a ride home. And even in that short drive, some like very profound uh, insight can come of that where you get to learn more about them and they get to learn more about you, uh, what maybe what makes you successful and maybe even some time to talk about your, your faith. Um, and then also don't just try to take care of the kids that you think are going to be helpful to the team athletically. Um, you know, Jesus doesn't just serve his disciples or cater to his disciples. He wants to connect with everyone. So we're called to do the same. And to be honest, you'd be surprised where some kids that, I mean, I remember having freshmen, sophomores on the team that I was like, yeah, I mean, really nice kid, but there's no way they're ever going to be like a scoring member of the team, no matter how hard they work. And then all of a sudden, like one summer, they make this big jump. And then all of a sudden, they're the like a scoring run on the team down the line uh, that you never would have guessed. So you never know how maybe one small interaction is going to pay dividends down the road for, for your program. Um, and I also I would have teammates like take that time on runs as well. I would have teammates that would we'd be running in a group and they would put headphones on <laughs> and I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? Like we're, because there's so many days that's great for our sport where there are days when it's like, Hey, just conversation pace. So now all of a sudden you have 30 minutes to an hour to have that dialogue with teammates and, 
and I think back on it, and some of my most like profound conversations and meaningful conversations I've ever had took place in those windows of, of running. Um, so don't miss out on that. Like make sure you take that opportunity because it's a great opportunity to learn more about your teammates and to, uh, and to possibly show your faith as well. Uh, this is also for the younger athletes. If any of you like freshman, sophomore, and feel like, oh, at my age, I don't really have any sort of um, leadership role or I don't have any platform for that or I don't have a voice. Um, you don't have to be an upperclassman to be a leader. If you're that person that shows up every day with a, really, a positive attitude and you work really hard, that's going to set a standard at least for your peers and most likely is probably going to have an impact on your upperclassmen as well that might need that. Um, lastly here, I want to go over uh, Christian living and then how we, how we represent ourselves. Um, and also how we represent our team and our faith. So as athletes, uh, sometimes it's unfair, but we have a lot of eyes and ears on us. See, it feels like at all times, especially the higher you go, if you see all these pro athletes that are just every action and word they take is constantly scrutinized. And that, that's a tough way to live. But I think as athletes, you at least have to deal with that reality that there's a lot of visibility on you. Um, so whenever some questions ask yourself in every action and word that you do is, um, how is my personal character? How's my team? And how are my faith being represented by, by what I'm saying? So am I somebody who, you know, doesn't, am I, is it somebody who's foul mouth, talk down to others? Um, for, as a team, like, are we on the bike path? Like, are we always taking up the whole trail? Or are we rude to other pedestrians? Like, do we have a good, um, do we have a good reputation within our community as a team that you would want, or people that would want to emulate? Or do we have this reputation of people that are always kind of the knotheads that are always screwing around or, or doing the wrong thing? Um, I think we have to remember that whenever we're out on the runs, there's a strong likelihood someone in your group is wearing like a shirt that represents your school or whatever your, whatever your team is. And so it's pretty easy for people to identify where, who you're with and where you're from. So always just keep that in mind. Um, from, from a Christian standpoint, for I think for the most part, if you're a Christian, people around you know that, whether you know, they know you personally. I, I don't think there's too many people out there that hide the fact that they're Christian. So, but with that comes a lot of responsibility in terms of how we represent our faith. So um, I especially I'll see people with, uh, that wear crosses as jewelry, which, which is fine. But with that comes even more responsibility. And now that even strangers who don't know you are now assuming you're a Christian as well. So every single action you take has to be representative of, of Christianity. So you don't want to be misbehaving or doing something objectionable that somebody who sees you and identifies you as a Christian who is maybe interested in Christ Christianity is all of a sudden going like, oh, like that's, that's what a Christian looks like. That's what, that's what that faith looks like. Maybe, maybe I'm not interested in that. So you never want to um, create a situation like that by, by misrepresenting yourself and your faith. Um, along the same vein, and this is more of just my input for you as um, hopefully going to college soon, whether you're going to run or not, uh, is to please, please <laughs> check your social media accounts. Um, and as you're going through, think about like, how does every post, comment, photo that I have here, how does it represent me, my team, and my faith? Um, I think I, I got to a point where I was getting a little fed up where I kept seeing all these athletes on TV that would have their big breakout moment. All of a sudden they, their, their name comes to stardom and they, cause they have like a great game. They throw a shutout or something like that or have a breakout race. And then within like an hour, somebody has posted an old tweet of theirs or a comment that they made on social media that now all of a sudden is calling into question their character. So their big moment, their big high now just went to, like my, my reputation is damaged. So, um, so I decided I'm going to go through mine as well. And I really thought like, I'm not going to find anything in here, but just in case I'll go through it. Cause I got to go back to like 2009 on my Facebook. And, uh, but I actually did find some stuff that I thought, yeah, man, it doesn't represent me super well. So, I mean, there's, but there's this awesome tool called the delete button. And so I would just go through and, and clear out what I didn't think represented me well um, cause I promise you all that your prospective employers, uh, prospective coaches, like if you want to get recruited, they're going to look at your social media as part of a character reference. Like they're going to have character references from your coaches or former employers, stuff like that. But 
most people seeking if they want you as part of their program are going to are going to be looking at your social media so keep that in mind um, and just be smart about it um, that is about all I have for you this morning uh, I hope this gives you all something to think about uh, on the run today maybe to discuss with your teammates as well uh, so I'll finish with a prayer here and then I'll turn it back over to Mr. Fruit Lord, thank you for the, this opportunity this morning for us to share in your love. Um, please bless these athletes this week with a heart centered on you. Please keep them healthy and safe and help them to be a blessing to those around them so that your name may be glorified. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks, Riley. Uh, that was really, really, really good stuff there. Um, so, again, I talked to you earlier about this, but a lot of people on YouTube want to know. You do have the world's largest Duke University uh, <laughs> basketball jerseys tanner said it's an amazing amazing collection of duke university basketball uh, jerseys right yep <laughs> so uh what got you into duke university duke basketball so when i was little i always just did everything my older brother did and for some reason he loved he loved Derek jeter so he was like a yankee fan which yeah i i get that uh but i get getting plaque for that uh, but he also loved duke basketball back in like the shane batty days so I got really into it as well, and then we kind of just started this collection, and he became less interested, but I stuck with it, so. All right, uh, awesome. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> talking to Riley, like I said, he's, he's done some amazing things running-wise, and so um, I really appreciate you, Riley, and we'll just uh, pray that God just continues to bless you running and let you um, glorify him. All right. Thanks, Mr. Fruit. Thank you. All right, see you guys later.